G'day guys and welcome back to Tyson's Enduro Workshop. Um, part 3 of my little series, Framing the Gas Gas. Um, today I'm just going to go over disassembling the carby, um, giving it a clean and hopefully some reassembly. So, a um, couple of things that should be noted. Uh, this particular carby is a PWK 38 Air Striker 2 or AS2 carby. Um, you can tell that by the two screws on the top here and the funny shaped top. Uh, some of the earlier bikes had the AS1 carby. Um, it's essentially the same, but the big difference is they had a single round screw top. Um, so they're the two, that's the easiest way to pick the two. Um, inside they're very much the same. Um, so same principles will apply. Um, so yeah, we'll just uh, get into it, um, stripping it down. Um, one thing I did want to tell you all about before we go too much further, before you start working on uh, any of these carbies, the screws that are in them are basically made out of solder. Um, you will only get one or two shots at pulling them apart with the stock screws. So what I would suggest is going into your local bolt shop uh, before you start working on these things and get yourself some um, high tensile screws uh, for the carby. These are all, there's uh, six in this carby. Um, these particular ones are M4 and the thread length on them is about 12 mil long. So go and buy some of them. These are the little hex head ones, um, but yeah, high tensile, uh, definitely well worth doing. Nothing worse than stripping out the uh, stock Phillips head ones and not being able to get your carby apart. So anyway, I'm just gonna get into it and uh, start stripping this thing down and um, hopefully talk you through it all a bit. I hope you can see everything all right here. Um, I haven't actually filmed like this yet, so um, we'll give it a go and uh, hopefully we can see everything all right. Right, yeah, so first things first, um, we just pop the cap off the top here. Um, I have just sort of assembled this roughly with the uh, throttle cable in there so you can sort of see what's going on. Uh, so yeah, just uh, take out those top two screws. Oh. The whole cap should just pop up a little bit like that with our spring underneath. And there's the cap off slide and needle there. Uh, to disassemble this little business, um, it can be a bit fiddly. Pull the spring up. There should be a plastic collar there. Make sure that that comes out. Sometimes they get stuck down in there. Um, and just grab the cable underneath, give it a little push back down, and it should just unhook like that. Uh, one thing to note on this plastic collar, uh, just inside here, there is a little groove, a uh, little tang I should say, and that actually slots back into the groove and holds the cable in inside there. So when you're putting it back together, make sure you line that groove up right, um, otherwise it can jam um, and all sorts of funny things can happen. So first we have our spring with the collar. You can just uh, pull the cable straight out the top there like that. Uh, there is a gasket, little rubber o-ring sort of gasket just in here. We'll leave that in there for now. Um, don't like to mess around with those too much. And sit that over here as well. So next step, um, we'll just quickly pull the slide apart. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's a six mil nut in there. So there is a little bolt in there. Just give that a crack. They're usually not done up too tight and don't over tighten anything in your carby. I think it should just be sort of pretty easy. There's the little bolt that goes in there and that holds the needle in position. Um, on your needle, you have a tiny little circlip here and various grooves. So I've got mine on the second from the top groove um, and this is a NEDW needle, uh, which is actually a Suzuki needle. Uh, the stock needles that come in these bikes are N1 series, 
Uh, they're absolute rubbish. You'll never jet your bike properly with them. Throw them away. Um, the NE series um, from Suzuki are really good. And I've also used the N3 series needles from Yamaha. Um, and they also come in some of the KTM bikes as stock. Um, they have a bit more of a, a punch on the power band, whereas the NE needles are, are very linear in their power delivery. Um, definitely one of my favorite needles, uh, the NEs. Uh, nice and smooth with the power delivery. So um, if you do have one of those N1 needles in your bike, uh, I would definitely suggest replacing that. Um, I don't think anyone's ever got one of those to run properly. I'm not sure why Gas Gas kept using them for so long. So anyway, I'm just going to put all my bits in my uh, aerosol can lid like I usually do so we don't lose track of anything. Um, that's the slide. It's fairly well polished. Um, be careful with those. Don't drop it. This is a number seven slide. That's stock. Um, I've found that to work very well. So um, yeah. Anyway, we'll sit that there. Uh, so next we'll get into the actual body of the carby itself. Um, I'll just uh, go through and start stripping it down. As you can see, it's pretty grotty. So the plan is just to give this a, a good strip down and uh, I'm going to give everything a good clean up. So we'll show you how I'll go about that in a minute. Anyhow, um, first things first, I'm just going to go through and clean all the uh, heads out underneath here just to make sure we don't strip any of these as we go. Make sure there's no dirt in them. They are actually pretty grotty down in here today. So. Just got my little uh, scribe thing here. It's looking a bit better. And so these back ones as well. Okay, hopefully they'll be clean enough to um, pop them out without too much dramas. See how we go. So this is just taking the float bowl off the bottom here. There is these little retaining ring things on the uh, breather tubes. Don't lose them, they have a bit of a habit of falling off. And they pretty much just go on the back of the carby on the two screws, one on either side. the uh, float bowl. Um, next I might just pull all these breathers off actually. Uh, just makes it a bit easier to see what's going on in here. Um, I've got before I knock it over. Uh, there's these little spring clips on them all. They can be a bit fiddly at times. Okay, so we've ripped off all the uh, breather tubes now. Put those to one side. I'm going to replace all of those. I think they're getting a bit old and hard and look pretty crappy. So we'll uh, order some new tubing. Um, so next business. Down here, I um, hope you can see this all right, is your float set up. So as the fuel bowl fills up, uh, it lifts those floats up, which in turn pushes on the uh, main needle, uh, I don't know what it's called exactly, um, main fuel needle in there. Um, 
there's a little metal tang in here. So to adjust your, your float level, you basically just bend that little tang fractionally um, and that changes when the main pin will shut off your fuel. Um, it's pretty tricky to see in here, but basically you can watch it slowly push up. There's a little plunger in the end of the pin. Um, you want to just have it, mine are pretty much just set basically horizontal in there. So that's when it all gets pushed up and you'll see it just starting to push the plunger um, in there. So um, if you're having trouble with fuel overflowing or whatever else, um, that's what you need to adjust. Um, quite a few videos around on how to do that. So, but anyway, to pull that out, there is a little pin that runs through here. Um, hopefully it's going to come out all right for me. Be careful not to lose these. There's the little pin that retains that. Um, and there's the floats. And you can see the little plunger there. That's just held on with a little wire retaining clip. And usually, if you're lucky, it should just pop off. Be nice and gentle with that. Yeah, I'm on. Um, so that's the main fuel cutoff jet there. Um, this end here is sort of rubber coated. Make sure that's a, a nice smooth taper with no obvious wear marks. And on this end here, you can actually see that little plunger bit there. Um, that's spring loaded inside. That'll actually move a little bit. So when you're setting your, fuel your float level, uh, that metal tang, you want it just to touch and move that just a fraction. Um, and that's where you take your measurement from. So, you know, put that in the little container, floats there. Uh, next we might pull out the uh, jets at the bottom here. Uh, there's two main jets uh, that we're going to work with here. Uh, the main one in the middle here, that's your main jet. So hopefully we just don't screw that. There's your main jet there. Uh, this one here is a 175 size. Uh, they usually have a little number stamped on the side there. There's your main jet. The pilot jet is in this hole here, and that's a, a flathead. Um, and a slightly different shape. Just unscrew that a little bit. Should fall out. Uh, so there's your pilot jet there. It's got the emulsion tube with a couple of small holes. Um, if you're having trouble with idling um, or uh, low throttle openings, check your pilot jet. Sometimes those holes block up a bit. It is important that they're open. Um, and my pilot jet size is a 42. So, yeah, 42. Uh, so this bike is a 250. Um, so therefore my settings would be a 42 pilot, 175 main, and I've got the uh, N3 EW needle on the second clip. Um, so that hopefully will give you a bit of insight into when people write up their jetting specs of what they're running, that's what they're talking about. Okay, so now we're getting down to the body of it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, pull out the air bleed screw. So there's two screws on the outside here. This bigger one at the top, that's your uh, idle speed. And there's a small one hidden down in here, a little brass one. That's actually your air screw. Um, so that's sort of fine adjustment um, with basically the lower end circuits. So idling um, and up to sort of uh, one quarter throttle settings. Um, it does sort of affect overall running of the carby. Um, all the circuits in a carby sort of overlap, so they all sort of contribute to overall performance. Um, before I pull that out though, I'm just going to gently screw it in and count the number of turns um, so that when I put it back in, I can set it back to where it was. So I'll do that now. So that's half a turn, one full turn and a fraction more. So this is only one and a tiny little bit open. 
Um, so I'm just going to quickly scribble that down. Um, air screw is one, not even a quarter, one and one eighth. Turn out. So now I can unscrew that all the way. That actually, that screw there actually goes through to that little port in there. Um, and as you unscrew it, you can actually see it in there moving. So it just by screwing it in and out, it just restricts the amount of air that goes through that particular port. Hopefully it'll come out without too much drama. I haven't played with that for a while. And I'm pretty sure there's a little spring inside there as well. So keep your eyes open. The spring there is actually a little bit of a rubber washer on the end there as well so yeah that's your screw. Uh, next um, I'm probably going to actually just leave that idle screw in there uh, I don't think that's going to cause us any problems um, next thing I'm going to do is just pull off the choke um, these are plastic uh, on, a, on the stock bike it actually had the choke up on the handlebars um, and I you can buy these. Um, I think they're pretty standard on a lot of PWKs. I think I've got this one from Yamaha. Um, I don't like the choke up on the handlebars. It's too easy to bump it and have problems with cables jamming and whatever else. So I've replaced it with the um, little plunger down here. So just uh, very gently loosen that out. Yeah, it turns. nicely now and there's the choke so that choke circuit is actually this tunnel here um, it goes through through the side here the choke either blocks it off or opens it and uh, it comes out on this side here so when it's open it's just allowing a bit more air to go through there um, and uh, because of there's more air, I guess it sucks more fuel or something like that. I'm not 100% sure how that actually works. But anyway, there's your choke. Um, when you lift the choke up, that chamber is open. When the choke's down, it blocks it. So, so there we have it. That's pretty much it for disassembly. Um, if you're doing a full rebuild on these, people have undone all these screws and stuff. If, if your carb is working fine, um, I'd leave all that alone. Um, some of the seats in here and stuff are replaceable, whatever else. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much it for disassembly, I think. Um, all I'm going to do now, make sure that washer there is going to stay there. Yes, it is. So there's all our basic components. Oh, one last thing. We'll just pop the drain bung off there. Another little o-ring in there I might actually flick that one there off there we go that's come off easily so so that's pretty much it for the strip down uh, so the next thing I'm going to do uh, pretty much just go over all the internal components so all the little bits in here uh, the choke slide floats we'll leave all the external stuff for now uh, I'm just going to quickly hit them all with a bit of Breaking parts cleaner or carby cleaner, whatever you've got handy, um, and blow them all off with a bit of compressed air. Um, hopefully, the compressor doesn't kick in and make a hell of a lot of noise while I'm doing this, but um, we'll just give all those a bit of a clean down and a blow off, and um, a couple of clean rags, and uh, we'll see how we go with all of that. Okay, so that's pretty much the internal components done. Uh, one thing with these jets, um, have give them a bit of a clean. Uh, make sure you spray air through both ends of them um, and through the emulsion holes as well. 
Um, once you've done those, just make sure they are nice and clean inside. Um, we might actually do a little bit more of a clean up of these as we go too. As you can see here, there's a bit of discoloration on the outside, but um, I've got a little trick coming up. Um, same with these bolts, they're maybe not quite as clean as they could be. Um, and same with the little retaining things, but we'll get to those in a second. So now I'm just going to quickly do basically the same thing with the uh, major external components. We'll just give it a quick clean with some parts cleaner and a quick blow off with some compressed air um, before I go on to the next step. Rightio, next step. Um, probably not entirely necessary. I'm doing this more just because I can. Um, I'm just going to run everything through the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I'm not going to put in all the soft internal parts. Um, I think they're all pretty much clean enough as it is. But we will be doing uh, all the outside components. I'm going to drop the slide in there. Um, I'm also going to put the uh, screws and the jets um, and the little breather tube retainers in there as well. Um, I'll sort of talk you through that a little bit as I go. A few little tricks involved. Um, the product I'm going to be using in there is just CT14, uh, made by Chemtech. I've used this a fair bit. It seems to work really well. Um, this is sort of the brother to CT18, which um, I'm sure a lot of you guys use just to wash your bikes. I've found this to be quite a good product. So uh, first things first, I'm going to measure out about 100 to 150 mils about there of the CT14 and pour that in then I'm just going to add some hot water this isn't quite boiling but it is pretty hot make sure that all mixes up nice um, ultrasonic cleaners you should fill them up with water before you turn them on they generally have a bit of a line inside of where you should fill them to so, Fill that guy there up pretty much almost to the top. Like that. And I'm going to use my little glass jar. I'm just going to scoop some of that out. What I'm going to do with this is put all the small parts in here. Um, if you use glass, apparently an ultrasonic cleaner will clean straight through the glass quite well. Um, plastic, not so well. Uh, it tends to dampen the vibrations and the uh, bubbles. So use a glass jar. We'll just drop all the small bits in there, like that, and sit that down inside there, just like that. Um, and then we'll start throwing the bits in. Um, I'm going to go from the cleanest to the dirtiest, just because as the dirt comes off, the uh, cleaning solution in there is going to get dirty. So we'll just drop in a few of the bits, and I probably can't get all the bits in here at once by themselves anyway. So I'm just going to drop all those bits in there like that uh, generally if you've got a choice put the dirty side down rather than the clean side down just as the dirt falls off it'll settle to the bottom of the tank so we'll start with those bits there for now um, might have to you do the throttle body by itself and we'll turn that on it wakes up. Um, on one side here we've got a temperature gauge so you can see it's actually on about uh, 58 degrees. Um, I'll probably set that to about 70 degrees centigrade. Uh, one thing I have noticed with this is as you're using it, it tends to heat up the water of its own accord, um, even with the, with the temperature turned off. Um, it just through the ultrasonic cleaning, it tends to heat the water. Um, something I found really interesting with it. Um, and I will set the time here. Uh, I might go for 20 minutes to start off with. Um, and just I'm just going to keep cycling it through, checking it as I go. Um, and uh, make sure we don't overcook anything. Uh, what I am using is slightly corrosive uh i guess so we will keep checking it regularly make sure we um don't go too far with it that's about it this thing makes a horrible bloody noise so um we'll turn it on uh let it run for a bit i won't bore you with all that but we'll show you what it does sound like 
and we'll press the on button. minutes let's um, pull everything out and have a quick look pull out that jar first to the small bits and pull the whole basket out with everything else so, give it a shake so, oh, tip everything upside down here just to drain it all quickly So that uh, was actually 25 minutes, so I was in between lunch, so I just gave it another 5 minutes. But um, as you can see, that's just the jets and the screws and stuff, but that was actually a nice uh, clear liquid. Uh, it's gone pretty grimy in there. So we might just um, tip those few bits, just strain off the liquid there so we can see what we've got inside. Um, everything here is a bit hot at the moment, it's burning my fingers a bit. so. Um, just be wary of that. We're at, we are sitting on 70 degrees at the moment. Let's tip all those bits there out. But um, yeah, I do get good results with this. Um, as you can see, there's still a little bit of dirt left. But if I compare those two together, um, I think you'll see that this thing's come up quite a bit cleaner than when I dropped it in. Um, doesn't sort of clean absolutely everything off, but it definitely makes uh, anything that's left on there a lot easier to get off. Um, same with all these bits, looking quite nice and shiny, a bit of a shine to all that sort of stuff now. So we might actually uh, let it go for a little bit longer. Um, some of these bits, like the slide, I think that's probably pretty much as good as it's going to get. Again, we might just drop that in there for a bit longer. You can see that bottom bolt there, that's come up beautifully clean. Um, so yeah, I might just give all this stuff a quick little scrub over, at least on the outside, with just a, a bit of a brush, and we'll drop it all back in there for a, another few more minutes. Um, these little tangs here, I don't know if you can remember, but they were fairly dirty on the back, but now they're actually quite clean. Um, so yeah, we'll just give all this stuff a quick little touch up with a brush. Might drop it all back in there for another 20 minutes. Um, and then yeah, we'll move on to the, the body of the carby. So handy little things these guys um, It is just sound that is actually doing the cleaning for you um, So there's no weird microwaves or anything like that. Um, it's just Heated and um, some ultrasonic sound So anyway, I'll just give those a quick scrub. We'll chuck them in for another 20 minutes and um, then we'll get onto the body Right, yeah, so that's another 20 minutes there. Just pull all this stuff out. Right, yeah. So that's all come up pretty good. Um, I'm just going to give all this a good rinse off with some water now um, and a bit of compressed air, make sure everything's nice and clean. And um, in the meantime, I'll chuck the uh, body of the carb in there and we'll get that done as well. Um, and then we should be ready to do some reassembly. Right, yeah, so we've had uh, everything clean now. Um, I've gone right through the main body here uh, after putting it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I've blown out all the air passageways, uh, got that all nice and dry, that's come up pretty well I think, about as clean as I've ever seen the carby to be honest with you. So um, now we'll just go ahead and um, stick it all back together and we'll go through that process while I'm doing it. So to start off with we'll just do all the really obvious stuff, um, got all our little bits here. Uh, first things first we'll just drop the jets back in there. 
So pile it jet in with the hole. Uh, when you're putting these in, they don't have to be tight. Um, just snug. Definitely uh, playing with aluminium and brass fittings. You uh, don't want to over tighten things. Main jet in there. Just give that a little snug down too. Like that. Rightio. Next little bit. Tip all this here out. So next we'll put the uh, choke in. This is all pretty much just uh, reverse order of how I disassembled it, I guess. Um, nothing fancy here. Screw that in as far as can by hand. And again, nothing too tight. Just snug that down into there. Make sure that pops up and down still. Nice. Uh, so next thing, get our floats, and we'll just stick that main little jet in on top there. Um, I've just got to try and remember which way these go. Fit here, the way it's adjusted like that. Right. So, just got that little uh, plunger bit sitting on there like that. Spin the carby around and drop that down into there, like such. Retaining pin. Make sure that goes through both sides, nice and flush. Just to verify that that's actually moving up and down in there, like it should. Um, you can actually even by gently blowing through there, verify that it's actually cutting off, which it is. That's nice. Um, air bleed screw. Just drop that back into there. Just going to gently screw that in all the way until it uh, seats. Not too tight. Pretty much seated there. And going to our air screw turns, we'll just uh, turn that out. One and a bees dick turn, half, one, and a little bees dick there. So, air screws back in. Um, next, we'll just put the uh, bung back in the bottom there. Don't forget the uh, rubber seal there. Screw that in by hand. Again, not over tightening anything, just snug that up. Like that. And that's all back together. And then we'll go for the uh, slide. Just going to drop the needle back down in through there, go through the hole, and the little retaining bolt. Just want to Sit that in here first, make it a bit easier for myself. Gently screw that in. Snug up there like that. All back together, beautiful. So now yeah, we'll just uh, sit the bowl on here, make sure you get that the right way, pretty obvious. 
set him on. I'm just going to do the uh, front two screws first, so just the plain ones, just to hold it all together, and the rest. Gently snug those up tight as well. Like that. And these back ones here, don't forget your little spacery bits. So I can never quite remember which one's which. Uh, I believe you can see the back here, I'm pretty sure that they sit that way. The uh, bigger lug pointing inwards. Interesting, they're both exactly the same shape. You would have kind of thought that they'd be mirror images of each other. Yeah, I might, might have these around the wrong way. We'll see. Bolt for those. Over tightening anything here, just gently snugging everything down. Give that a little tweak. Like that. Um, and next, we can. I'm going to leave the throttle cable out of it just for now. Um, so we'll just, just for now, we'll just drop all this back together. Um, I'm just going to drop the slide down in there. Uh, just do that nice and gently to make sure that you uh, don't bend your needle or anything crazy like that. Spring going in, remembering that little tang's got to go down uh, along that same groove that the cable's going to go down. Actually, we might even sit that in there first. It'll make it a bit easier just to see what's going on. So that'll just drop down into there like that. Slide in. And then we'll just sit the cap back on top as well. So spring over there. Gently push that down. And two little bolts in there. Screw those up finger tight for now. As we are going to be pulling this apart again later on. To install the throttle cable. And there we have it, that's about it. Like I mentioned, I am going to get some uh, new hoses for the vents, so we'll leave those off for now um, until they turn up, and I'll make sure I don't lose the little hose clips. But um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think you'll agree that looks pretty good. Um, about the cleanest car view I've seen, apart from a brand new one. So yeah, that's about it for today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, if you think anyone else would enjoy this content, uh, please feel free to share. And yeah, that's the first bit. I think we've got uh, cleaned up, ready for reassembly of the uh, bike. So um, I'm just going to put that in a plastic bag for now. Uh, we'll put it in the bits and um, I guess theoretically we're going to actually build the bike around the carby, seeing as the first bit that's actually clean. So anyway... Uh, PWK Air Striker 2 Carby um, 38mm Happy days